What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to place 3D objects in real world spaces using After Effects and Blender. Now there is a program called AI to Blender, but for some reason I can't get it to work. So, and you also have to pay for it. So this is an alternative free version. It is called After Effects to Blender Export. I'll drop the link below. I'll, I'm also going to be including the footage so you can follow along. What you want to do is download this file so we can just go to code and hit download zip once you have downloaded it you'll have a zip file which you can just open up so i'm just going to extract that quickly and we can delete the zip file so all you're going to be needing is this export composition data to json and then the import com to blender so the first thing we're going to do is take our stuff into after effects so let's open up after effects now to use this add-on in after effects you're going to have to go to file scripts and say install scripts we're going to look for that same script so let's open up that folder we downloaded and go to click on export composition data to json select it um, and then just make sure you apply it i have it already so i'm going to overwrite hit ok you're then going to have to restart after Effects. once you have opened up after fix again just to make sure that you have installed it correctly we're going to go to file scripts and make sure you can see export composition data to json once it's all set up we're pretty much good to go from after Effects side so we're going to import our file click import and the first thing we're going to do is right click and say new composition from selected Let's go to our effects and presets and type in camera. And we're going to use the 3D camera tracker and just drop it in. From here, we're going to go to advanced and select detailed analysis. And we're going to let it render out. If you're experiencing an issue where it's analyzing for too long, what you want to do is head over to this file location. Um, I'll leave it available for Windows and for Mac. Um, so once you're in here, you're going to have to rename the latest version to old and restart After Effects. So you can rename it to old and then you can restart After Effects and it should be sorted. That's what I found would happen on my Mac. Um, but in case it happens on your Windows, you can do that. Once the once 3D tracking has completed, you can then increase the scale of your tracking points and just find an area that has a lot of tracking points for the most period of time. So for me, it's around the seven second mark. And we're just going to click and select all of these and we're going to right click and set ground plane and origin first make sure to do that or else in blender it won't be set correctly and then we're going to right click again and say create solid and camera when we click anywhere on after effects we now see that there is a little um, solid track for you and you can see it's done a really good job once it's complete we're going to select the track solid and the 3d tracker camera go up to the top left press file scripts and say export composition dates to json we're going to make sure that whole comp is selected and export selected layers only is and we're going to choose the folder we wish to export to so i'm just going to call this youtube video and hit export now we can open up Blender. In Blender, we need to activate the Blender add-on. So we're going to go edit, preferences, go to our add-ons, hit install. Look for the download folder that we got off GitHub. And we're going to look for the .py file and say install add-on. Once that has been installed, we can just double check by going through our add-ons. And as you can see, it says import, export, import After Effects composition, which is what we need. Once it's done, we're going to go to file, import, and click on After Effects composition data. This is the add-on that we just added. And we're going to go to our .json file that we exported from After Effects. Click on it, and we're going to select com center to origin we're going to make sure we've selected all of these and set the scale factor to 0.001 and hit import ai comp now it is a little bit off on the z axis but at least uh, it's aligned if you do know how to make it perfectly fit on the origin please let me know in the comments so from here we are just going to open up another panel go to our camera say view set view camera set active object as camera and you can see we've got a similar preview to after effects with the camera select we're going to go into our camera data settings go to background images add an image go to movie clip and hit open and then let's look for that video clip that we got from after effects and, and hit open clip now at first it does look a little bit dim solve the solution we're going to increase the opacity i normally just pump it straight up to one um, and then from here you can start modeling and doing your thing one thing you need to make sure of is that in your output settings your frame rate is the same as the composition from after effects so mine was set to 25 just to confirm that we can go back to after effects go composition settings and we can see our frame rate is 25 so we are good from that point next we're going to do is scale this up because this is going to be the floor where all our shadows are catching so let's go to our top view we can press edit 
and just start to bring this around in our preview um, and you can still see it's tracking really well happy with that uh, let's bring this back a little bit more now this is going to be our shadow catcher so to make sure that is working we're just going to go into our material preview window and you'll notice that the background disappears this is because we don't have transparent rendering on so we're going to go to our renderer go to film and click transparent and you'll see that it reappears and um, we're also going to turn on motion blur just so it looks a lot better and then we are going to go to our plane here that we imported from after Effects. that's going to be our shadow catcher to turn that on we're going to go to objects go to visibility and click shadow catcher now to see if the shadow catcher is working correctly we're going to press shift a and add in a cube just bring this up on the z-axis we can go to our side view here just to make sure it is touching the floor then we're going to add in a light source so i'm going to stay on my top view press shift a and add in a light we're going to be using area lights i always suggest using area lights just because uh, you have more control i know a lot of people suggest using um, an hdri but i don't know i don't normally get such great results with it so this is going to be our source of light now when you're working with lights you always want to try to replicate those that are in the environment that you're working at so we have a window light and then multiple other ceiling lights we can also see that there's a little bit of light coming from the direction of the camera so from here we're just going to rotate this and make sure that we're happy i'm going to increase the power of these lights to about a thousand you can see the light gets a lot harsher now it's always best to match the shadows in the environment that you're working in so you can see there's not really a lot of um, shadows so let's just make the light bigger so that our shadows get softer and then we can bring this power down to maybe like 250 now this light is going to be replicating our window light so i'm going to try and match this as best as possible copy this top light so let's press shift d and rotate to create a top light you can then reposition it and then there's probably one more light coming from here the last light that we're going to add is the light that's coming from the camera's direction so let's add another area light from here press rotate 90 degrees along the x-axis and bring it back and let's just align it and bring this up to maybe about 100 keep it at 50 just so there's a little bit of contrast so once that is all set we pretty much good to go so once we are happy with everything we're now going to export it back into after effects so let's go to our render settings now because it is done on a phone and not like a high quality camera i normally like to render out quite low uh, so i'll choose around 100 max samples and because we have motion blur on it doesn't like affect it too crazy it looks pretty realistic and it kind of fits that that phone look so once we're happy with that we can go to our output settings make sure your frame rate is the same as your after effects composition then we're going to export this into a new folder so let's call this renders we can name it render one press accept and keep your render settings as is now there is a little cutoff at the end here so i'm just going to render this out to 240 frames so end frame equals 240 and then when you do a little playback here you can see that tracking is pretty much as good as it gets so we can now go render animations and it will start rendering frame by frame you can see roughly how long it takes on the top left here your last frame was five seconds and you're doing 240 frames you can do the maths and you'll get your expected render time now once that is complete we're going to go back into after effects i'm just going to be importing previous render i did with the bottle so we're going to go file look for our render we're going to select the first render which will be 000 and make sure that you have png sequence selected and we're going to click import and we're going to bring this down to our composition now what you'll notice at first is that it's not really aligned and it's moving all over the place this is because after effects assumes your frame rate for some reason when you import an image sequence so what we're going to do is go up to our render one right click and say interpret footage hit main and change our assume this frame rate setting to 25 or whatever settings you exported in blender so mine's going to be 25 um, and then what you'll notice is when i drag this out everything is aligned and it's good to go we're going to hide this track solid and the 3d track camera and then what i'd like to do is four renders like this especially with your iphone um, i actually like to add a little bit of gaussian blur just to make it not so like crisp because when you're coming from a render and there's no depth of field you're going to get that so i normally pump it up to like one or two nothing crazy just so that it's not too sharp and it almost matches the rest of the footage before we export just because we cut short at 240 frames we're going to change our comp just bring it in like this right click and say trim comp to work area then we're going to go file export add to render queue and 
our output module we're going to keep as is you don't have to change it unless you want to or know how to our output two i'm just going to set it to my desktop and we can hit render and it should render out everything once that is complete you should have something that looks like this if this video did help you i'd really appreciate dropping a like comment and sub if you need any help make sure to join my discord channel i do really appreciate it make sure to stick around for weekly videos about digital fashion 3d animation and blender you name it really appreciate the support as always and i'll see you guys in the next one peace